Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is my tracking spreadsheet. It's just a, a document that I keep track of all my different worm bins on. If you visit my YouTube channel main page and you look under the community tab, you'll find various uh, little polls that I run where people provide their input on topics and I do little surveys. And even here you can see on one occasion I had even opened up a dialogue about, hey, how do you track the information about your worm bins? And here I showed my tracking spreadsheet. And it's always fun to engage with the viewers on topics like this and see everyone's feedback. But um, let's get back to the original topic here at hand, my spreadsheet. So now that we're on the uh, tripod, I can kind of use both hands to point that stuff here. Yay! <laughs> so I was really um, kind of looking at my little, what I attempt to do is here, put some future dates in here and maybe even contemplate ahead of time what I'm going to be doing on each day so that it uh, fits into what my worms need. So it's usually starting out with an activity that dates back the longest and I usually have these little counters showing how many days have elapsed since a particular time and I've got these two things here labeled as horizontal migrations. I've got two systems right now that are in this third life cycle phase of migration and these um, counters are showing us that we're now 16 days into the migration of the older one and seven days um, into the migration of the next oldest one so these two systems it might not be completely obvious but basically I'm trying to evacuate these systems get the worms to move out on their own out of the finished casting so they could be relocated and then those castings can be harvested and this migration method is the way I uh, try to do that. And since I've only got one of these bins lined up to be worked on today, it occurred to me that, you know, they're very similar in nature. It's been about the same amount of time that has passed um, for each one. So I thought that maybe kill two birds with one stone. These little open brackets indicate um, work to be done. And I get to put something else in there other than the open bracket, maybe a check mark maybe some other details, but that's my work to be done here today, and I just thought I'd um, share this with everybody before I went downstairs, so why don't we get down to the wormery and see what's happening in these two horizontal migrations of these two systems. I thought we would begin with the younger of the two bins, the one that's only been in this migration mode for a week. The worms that occupy this bin, it's the one that's already here on the bench, they're the African night crawlers that I received from Northeast Worms, dot com and the one weird thing about this system is that um I, I did something here that i've never done in any other system was the removal of all the adult worms over the course of four separate extractions to see if i can really try to remove every last one of them and i wouldn't expect that i came even close but i no, i mean i would say i came close but there's no way that i could have possibly removed them all so now you notice there was bubble wrap plastic on this side and just a, a single sheet of newspaper on this side. As a result of there being only a single sheet of newspaper on this side, this so top surface is super dry. So that if I had to guess, I would have to assume that no worms are anywhere near this surface. Way too dry for worms. Um, the whole idea is that I've been managing this side of the bin with the plastic covering to hold moisture in, all this fresh bedding for them. This side of the bin has been um, managed in such a way that it's uh, meant to lure the worms over and hopefully convince them to stay if they do come over. Uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, but there's um, there are holes on this cardboard all over to enable it um, to be very easy for worms to pass through the stuff. And then this way, at some point after I've hauled this out and relocated the worms into a new home, I can... Um, I can just take the stuff on the other side and treat it as finished um, compost for the most part. It'll be it'll be riddled with all kinds of little bits and pieces of um, lingering stuff. But I've been sort of lowering the bar on what I want to treat as sort of a, a finished batch of castings that's ready for this step. Um, a lot of times I've been just hanging on to these castings after the worms have all been moved out and try to nurture the cocoons that are in the material. So the stuff just sort of sits around for a while. And at that point, I do start, you know, trying to counteract this drying with um, the application of moisture to rehydrate and to make things um, conducive to 
cocoon hatching. Temperature plays a part. Stuff like that. So I guess the reason we're in here now is to judge after a week's time, you know, how are we doing? Um, if there's still lots of worms out here, obviously this has to continue and my guess is that that's what we're going to encounter. So we need to probe around a little bit and gauge how much of this migration is still pending. Sometimes the worms surprise me. Um, and sometimes I just sort of line myself up for a surprise by, you know, maybe looking in the wrong place. So, I mean, for me to have looked around and found no worms so far just means I didn't look in the right place. Here I went a lot deeper this time and I, um, I encountered a worm. Probably doesn't appreciate me meddling with him. <laughs> so I'll let him go and I, I have to assume that there's probably still worms on this material, but I, I've got to tell you. I was expecting to find quite a bit more, to tell you the truth. But perhaps perhaps this material has already been broken down to that point where the worms were anxious to find something different. But then again, you know, I, I've got, I can't keep treating this as just another one of my run-of-the-mill systems. i got to keep reminding myself that all the big, huge worms that northeastworms.com sent me um, have since been fished out of here individually one by one over time and relocated into another system. So what I should really be searching for is small worms, little tiny guys. I mean this is not only a migration of worms but over time it was a um, it was a reduction of the adult worms leaving only behind whatever would emerge from their cocoons over time. So it's almost like a, a bin of the next generation worm. So yeah, you know, as soon as I realigned my my thinking, I started spotting smaller sized worms. And I probably glossed right by a few of them. It's just that every time I think of my um my worm bins, when I when I think about this particular population of worms I received from Northeast Worms, they were just so huge and impressive that I might have just um sort of set my visual filter for big worms I was looking out for big worms but um, it does seem to me like what we're really dealing with here is the depopulation of these castings of baby worms worms that are not yet even old enough to be laying down cocoons of their own and that's just another thing that sort of sets this um, batch of finished castings apart from other systems that I've got similar to this is that at no time have I sort of um, crippled a bin of its ability to propagate and for the population to grow but in effect that's exactly what I did here over four occasions of me removing all the worms that are of mature enough breeding age I bought a halt by doing so to the creation of new cocoons in this material so in a way I could almost treat that final extraction of adult worms which at this point happened weeks ago it's possibly the last time any new cocoons were placed into this stuff. So at that point, maybe start, you know, counting the days that have passed. And at a certain point, you would have to say, hey, even, even if there was a cocoon laid in here on the last possible day, then enough time has passed for, for that to, um, for those cocoons to hatch and for the babies to emerge. So at this point, there should be nothing else that requires more time and that uh, and that at that point you can really treat this as having um, already had all of its cocoons hatch and all of their babies relocated now you know here's a really really tiny one this is really what I'm kind of looking for or expecting but a lot of people tell you that these African night crawlers even though they're a huge adult worm once they grow, if they grow big, they um, they can become really impressive. But their cocoons are very small, supposedly, and their their baby worms are um, understandably very small as well. And the material right over here on the edge, near where the feeding zone was set up, does feel nice and damp and comfortable, um, much more so than the material at large out in the rest of the bin. So I. Uh, 
I guess we can say for certain that a lot of um, worms inhabit this stuff still, and there's, I don't even know, maybe even a little bit of potential for more to be born. That I don't know. I might have to look at when the last haul out of adults occurred and then maybe treat that as a, um, a counter for, you know, how much time would have elapsed if there had been cocoons placed in here, even on that last final day of the bin being occupied by adult worms. So we, um, we're going to let this continue. I guess I will just let it continue to dry through that sheet of newspaper, which we'll put back on. But before we go, I guess we should probably size up how things are looking over here in the feeding area baiting area I don't even know horizontal migration feeding zone is the all-inclusive uh, name that I came up that seems to best describe what this thing is and what its purpose is and everything like that so here I would assume hmm, we've even got some leftovers how do you like that here is where I would assume some of our worms have been um, congregating the ones that uh, were able to sense the fact that there's some yummy food out there perhaps even a, a greater level of moisture than what was out there in the um, finished castings even food like this banana peel there's um there's some yummy leftovers in here and there's um certainly a good amount of bedding here as well so a lot of times what i'll do is i'll increase the size of this baiting area a little bit by jamming its contents over to the inner portion of the container like so drop in a little bit of additional bedding and more food to help keep this process going so we're going to do that here as well grab some fresh bedding I like it when I could use a little bit of bedding to sort of shelter the worms from the frozen stuff I'm placing into the bin and this system's no different Knowing that a good number of worms have already started making their way over into this feeding area to come for that last feeding they received a week ago, I don't want to um, take any of the frozen material that they're getting today and just drop it right on top of them. So this way I feel like I've shielded them from it a little bit. And even though there's a little bit of leftover, I saw some leaves in there. I saw that banana peel. I think there's certainly no harm in just helping to keep the process humming along by throwing in a little couple extra bits of stuff for the process to continue. There's some cabbage here, red cabbage, and the rest of this is um, either the peels or just the ends of some cucumber. Stuff is frozen, I'm just taking whatever will chip off easily. It doesn't seem like we've got to go overboard because there was still leftovers. There's still a little bit of um, remaining food in here from a week ago. So they haven't knocked out the food supply quite yet. And who knows if they even will, but um, you know, there's that reputation baby worms have of being voracious eaters. So we'll save a little bit of this coffee that I bought down for the other system. But, you know, after seeing how far things have come in here after only a week with so few worms remaining in this finished compost, it makes me wonder what to expect from that other system. There we might be, who knows, we might be pretty close to the finish line over there. I am prepared to do the same in there, which is just to re replenish the food supply to help, you know, support ongoing... Uh, migration but sometimes it, it is better to first make sure that um, there's even any migrating left to occur perhaps all the worms have moved down already and at that point you could really consider it as a as a done deal so I think one other thing I'd like to do here I don't want to go overboard but I'd like to bring in my spray nozzle just for a little squirt down I'm not going to go crazy here, but it did seem like this material could benefit from a little bit of moisture. And admittedly, the, the materials we threw in there, that cucumber, that cabbage, as that stuff starts to thaw and break down, it's going to also help boost the moisture level over here. But, you know, you could tell. This stuff's drying out, getting drier by the day. And the same 
dry air, same dry winter air in the house that's causing drying over here is also affecting what's over here. That plastic covering is not capable of protecting us completely from drying. So here it probably makes sense to sweeten the deal as best we can to you know try to speed along the migration of the worms out of the finished compost so that the so that the process can be drawn to a close and and then everyone can go about their business on to their newest endeavors. Let's um let's get things here covered back up more or less the way we found them. I think what I did last time was I tried to do my best to utilize as much of this plastic to get as much of this material here covered up as thoroughly as is possible. I know it allows for a little bit of moisture loss but the more damp we can keep it the more you know comfortable and um, appealing it is for the worms. So let's see how that other system's doing, the one that's migrating for 16 days now. Now these, as you might recall from my little diagram, are the older ones. They're the ones here that have been um, migrating for 16 days. These are red wiggler worms, and these worms originally were sourced from outside. So the fact that they're from outside, we sometimes encounter little um, creatures that came along for the ride with the worms. You know, we see uh, we see roly polies, little isopod type um, insects, which I consider as a welcome guest in my worm bin, so they stay. But sometimes I see the larvae of what I think to be moths, and I always pluck those out because, you know, I'm in my house, and I don't mind if uh, I've got one of these little roly polies in my worm bin. He's not going anywhere. He's going to stay right there in the worm bin and help with the breakdown of tough materials in my system. But if I see a little caterpillar, one that's just going to turn into a moth and fly around and eat my wool sweaters. <laughs> Not that I even have that many wool sweaters or even know where they are. <laughs> um, but you get my point, you know, I don't need flying insects that I bought into the house um, running amok. So I do everything in my power to make sure I'm not um, leaving any of those little larvae around when I spot them. Kind of funny, we just got done looking at a, a bin full of African night crawlers and they were all tiny, so these red wigglers in comparison seem massive. Because <laughs> in general, what you're dealing with is a uh, an African night crawler being a much larger um, creature than a uh, than a red wiggler worm. So all I did there was pluck out a couple of these little um, little caterpillars. These are very very small ones, much smaller than I've seen in the past. So I don't even know if they come, you know, out of some sort of a egg or who knows what was left behind by the adult moth that left them here. Um, here's another little something, which I don't even know what it is, but it's got this really shiny kind of capsule with little ribs on it. I would have to guess that that's also some sort of a little insect that made its way into the system. Who knows, maybe I'm taking out an isopod larva or something. Um, it would be good to know what that shiny capsule looking insect is, but without knowing, I'm just going to err on the side of caution and just pull it out. So, you know, if I see anything moving, something that doesn't belong, I'll pull it out, but I think we pretty much got them all. This almost makes me want to actually take all these little isopods that I see out on the surface and collect them up and actually place them all down into the area where all the worms are. At some point when we relocate these worms, get them into some new habitat, I want these roly polies to stay with them as helpers so I know I saw other ones so we'll keep our eyes open if we see any other ones that we can bring over here then great we'll do that as well so I guess the real question is do we continue migrating or don't we now I guess here a little different from what we talked about in the African nightcrawler system here I've got a cocoon which based on its light color would suggest to me that it's still got a little bit of development before it'll start hatching the um, the red wiggler cocoons well I think all worm cocoons take on a darker color as they approach that point in time when they're gonna hatch and when you find a really light colored one you have to guess that it's probably 
only been in the system for a short period of time needs, needs a little bit more time to get to that point where the worms can squirm out of it. So that's something I do kind of expect in this material is um, cocoons that might take still who knows how long, weeks before they'll begin um, revealing what's inside as opposed to the African nightcrawler system. And that system it feels to me like once I've moved all the babies out there's really not um, any more potential for any more cocoon hatchings because there's just been nobody in that bin old enough to leave behind cocoons. So that's kind of my only thinking on these two evacuations of material. It just seems to me like uh, here maybe I can hang on to these castings for a little while after the worms have been moved out and give a little time for the cocoons to hatch and then I round the baby worms up out of here at some future point in time as opposed to the the nightcrawler bin where I've already over time gradually removed all the adults and once the last of the babies are moved out I would have to guess that those castings are pretty much devoid of any more potential for more worms and can probably be used right away so um, that's that's the point where these two systems I believe will diverge in terms of you know what happens to each once we reach the end state of these castings being depopulated fully migrated so after 16 days I, I got to admit I was expecting a little bit more I didn't expect so many worms to be hanging out in this stuff but you know admittedly we're looking at the portion of the bin that's getting partially covered by that little plastic covering that was on here here too the idea was to allow this material access to the air and by covering it with paper only it allows for ongoing drying but it's certainly not nearly as dry as the material in the uh, African nightcrawler bin this stuff must have just been a lot more damp to begin with because this stuff over here right by the dividing wall is pretty damp and it's pretty well populated with worms still yeah we, we've still got some migration that has to occur here before we can consider these castings as depopulated we'll check the other side too you know the the ed edge of the bin that's more distant from where the feeding zone is to see how things are progressing over there so I'd like to sort of till that stuff up a bit too make sure it's aerated that all contributes to the ongoing drying of the material not to make it super uncomfortable for the worms or you know by no means dangerous for the worms but still perhaps not as favorable a condition as the worm would like if it had a chance to choose and maybe it'll get the worm moving looking for a somewhat cozier more damp spot to be the whole idea is that the worm will eventually end up over on this edge of the bin which is where we're maintaining that type of an environment oops I think I just ripped up the little partition cardboard I had placed there but we've more or less um, aerated all of this stuff I pulled out a banana stem here's a chunk of avocado pit um, you know I could probably sit here and just move worms over into the collection area one by one <laughs> if I wanted to and that's all fun and games too but you know that's not what we're here to do I I know for a fact at this point that the migration will continue I wonder how long it'll take I guess we can try to help answer that question by trying to size up how many wor worms there are even out here on this far edge of the bin. I wonder if the dampness is remaining over here too and maybe giving the worms no reason to move out. I mean not, not as many as we saw over here but still one or two, two or three. I've already bumped into a few and that's all the way at the far edge. So there's still worms in this material for sure that need to evacuate. And there's a, a good bit of moisture in this system that still needs to escape. And as a result, turn the material into a somewhat less hospitable place. A place that the worms might not want to just hang out in. Maybe inspire them to go searching for something better. So I don't think we have to go too crazy tilling up all of this stuff. This stuff is a little bit drier than what's right here on the very edge. And as a result, it just feels like it just sort of breaks apart and tills 
up much more readily so I might not need all that tilling and aerating just found a couple more chunks of what I think is avocado pit so I just figured I'd pull it out I'd hate to think that a couple worms are just huddled around that little morsel of food down in the old stuff as opposed to being on the move looking for some fresh material to hang out and some fresh food to dine on so I always try to reduce the appeal of this stuff every chance I get by removing food helping the moisture to be removed I guess good thing I'm not like sprinkling salt in here to try to drive them out right <laughs> all right I, 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 I do feel like I could probably just cover up and this thing will hum along fine without any other attention but I guess it wouldn't hurt just to make sure that dampness and food supplies over in the collection area are holding up okay those 16 days that have passed since we initiated this migration um, it went eight days before we checked in on this thing and we added more food and now another eight days later I'm just curious to see if we need to replenish anything the moisture feels perhaps a little bit better than it did in the um, in the African nightcrawler system this stuff doesn't really feel like I would need to spray it down but the bottle is steer, still here next to me if we decided or changed our mind that it was necessary down here this is remarkable it just seems like as many large worms I also see little itsy bitsy tiny worms nested around these food morsels these are I guess pumpkin I think I really wanted to lay out some stuff here that the, the worms would really be jazzed by so I thought pumpkin would be the perfect thing that the worms would really consider as a delicacy I'm questioning whether we need to add food though you know if there's still leftovers like that well you know let's think practically I've already started nudging things over to try to make more room over there so I think I could easily just continue with that and open things up a little bit because I've already got that pieces of cucumber and cabbage over there ready to go I just need to make the space for it yeah we got a pretty good turnout you know in the past I've done incremental haul outs of the worms from these collection areas thinking that maybe if we allow it to get perhaps a little bit overcrowded the worms might um, want to go the other way and leave or something I don't know I just uh, I haven't been doing that lately I've been kind of going for the the whole quantity of worms to be collected I'm trying to wait for the entire population to make it over into this stuff over here before I start planning on the extraction or relocation of the worms so it's just sort of trans transformed into my way to do it anymore and I do have a new newly built bin into which I could move worms if I had chosen to do so but we're not going to do that here we're going to simply um, reinforce what's happening here with a little bit extra bedding a little extra food and we're going to let it continue all right fun stuff not much left to do here really it's just a matter of um, bringing in a little bit of stuff here to protect against the freezing and heck everybody knows that the worms love their bedding so why be stingy with it this stuff has had a little bit of a chance to thaw here but oh yeah this is one chunk I'm not going to be able to break that very easily so we'll put that right in the middle as the crowning chunk of food all this cucumber is going to be popular this stuff's got a lot of moisture content to it that's for sure I don't think we're going to use all of this some of this is going right back into my freezer um, but you know what let's see let's just empty what's in this bag at this point Ooh, making a mess <laughs> So I saw two more chunks of cabbage. I thought that we can kind of spread those out evenly, and then all of this, um, all of this cucumber can go back in the freezer. We don't need this much. There was still leftover um, pumpkin bits. Oops. Let's get all this stuff off the table. Put it to good use in the uh, worm bin. 
But yeah, you know, you saw there was bits of pumpkin left over from the last time we had reset in here. So they don't need a uh, they don't need this extra food, but since it did seem like there was a good number of worms over there, it seems like and moisture um, it did seem like it might take a little bit longer for these worms to get up and go and exit the finished compost. So, you know, I like the idea of making a really cozy spot for them over here on the other edge of the bin. In this system, you know, since I do anticipate the need for um, waiting, waiting a while for the all the cocoons and this stuff to have had enough time to hatch and for the babies to get rounded up, I've been thinking that in this system I might try something new, which is to just keep pushing this stuff over and over as much as I can. Maybe it'll settle a bit more and I'll be picking other things out of it if I keep bumping into large chunks. Who knows? And just leaving it here, leaving the stuff, you know, stacked up as high as I could with this little dividing wall here, still helping me maintain a distinction between the two sides, but kind of treat the start of this migration, the day that I, you know, had created this feeding zone here as the start of the new environment, because that's really what it is. When the time comes to separate what's here, this really does sort of become its new environment. None of the feedings that I put in here contributes to the, the final collection of castings that came out of here. Everything that goes into here goes with the worms at the end and is effectively part of their new environment should they get relocated. But if we were to switch gears here and start thinking about it a little differently, this is a new environment. So I've been just contemplating switching the way I track my records and maintain my information about my bins. And that just seems like um, perhaps a better way to maintain uh, records on how much food the worms um, were given in order to make a, a finished batch of um, castings because when the time comes to size up how many castings these worms created in this new environment these um, these three feedings that have gone into here thus far are all contributing to that batch of castings not these castings here so I don't know if that makes any sense and I don't even I don't even know if it matters that much perhaps if you were really you know counting nickels and dimes and you were doing this for um, profit or if this was your business it might make sense to think of things that way in terms of inputs translating into outputs and where stuff's happening but uh, but for what we're doing here this is strictly for fun <laughs> I just can't um, resist thinking that way maybe you're like me maybe you just like running the numbers in your head and trying to figure out what equates to what and how all right I think that should keep things covered pretty good here keep the moisture down the um, all those chunks of cabbage and cucumber peels all contributing to the moisture over there and now with the agitation that happened in this stuff and with only a piece of paper covering things up perhaps we can even leave off this last covering so that we can even further contribute to the drying of this material a little bit maybe we can um, actually see the exit of the worms out of here happen more quickly but then then I'm torn again you know what about the cocoons what about the moisture they need in order to you know make it to the finish line and be able to hatch from their cocoons maybe it is better to let the moisture level in the castings remain high until all the cocoons have hatched out and the babies have moved so I don't know <laughs> I'm always uh, feeling like I'm getting pulled in two, di two different directions when it comes to how to manage dryness in a more mature bin like this, a bin that's transitioning from one thing to another and how the material is going to um, start trying to meet different objectives um, in its next phase or its next portion of its life cycle. But, uh, but now I'm really getting in the weeds, so let's leave it at that. <laughs> that's it for the video, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, if you did, please, before you go, don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.